A pleasure to me all at last, and welcome back to films I should have talked about years ago. And now it's time that we start getting a little bit more of Gerard Butler in our life. He is in fact a great, great actor. And I speak great because of the likes of Greenland, Geostorm, and of course the Fallen Trilogy. But now it's time that we talk a bit about something that sort of preceded all of those. Let's talk a bit about the 2010 film, The Bounty Hunter. And The Bounty Hunter is not just any sort of weird old cliche thing that happens. A private contractor who gets paid in big cash and all that good stuff. Just to kill somebody. It's a bit more than just that. You see, Gerard Butler plays a well-known contractor. A bounty hunter as he's dubbed by his own superiors who basically takes any and all known jobs possible, just so he can keep on having the money to support himself. But in this case, what happens is that somebody has basically violated a bail from prison. And the person who basically violated the bail is none other than his wife. You see, Butler himself is truly fantastic. But when it comes to the likes of Jennifer Aniston, there's a bit of a chemistry between the two. Enough to make Adam Sandler feel pretty darn mad. But I'd be more than sure that that probably did not happen. He probably looked at this film and went something like, oh, I kind of like Butler on screen. I can't really be sure of that for sure, but hey, that's just what it is, really. But let's not forget though, aside from the coincidence that the bounty hunter's own wife is in fact the violator and the one who needed to be chased down and taken into custody. But there is also the issue at hand where they both have to escape a real big threat. A threat that happens to try to want to take both of them out. So I suppose that's probably nothing too special there. And it's just a bit of a repeat of probably thousands of different films that surround on the likes of action, comedy, adventure, drama, etc. A nice unique combo of all those things. And I could probably not talk about this any other way possible. There's just not a whole lot left to identify with. Although I can at least point out a few nice key features, including a car chase. A pretty unique one to say the least. One car crashes and another few basically are armed to the teeth with machine guns. And then of course there is the beginning. The beginning of which that stars Gerard Butler himself chasing down a random dude set to Sean Kingston's burning on the dance floor. So I don't know how I could get any more creative than this. Well. Actually, when you really picture it, I could probably see a lot of things happening. But at the end of the day, I'm probably not here to talk about everything related to the film itself, but just the key ingredients that help make the film what it is. The story of a bounty hunter who goes after his wife, not knowing that she is actually the one responsible for a certain crime that he now has to serve justice for. He basically now has to pass down the law directly to her with his own gun, with his own mouth, etc. Everything at a hunter's disposal. But I really do like this film for what it is. It's got the nice combo of things like comedy, action, and adventure. Considering that those two have had huge careers of their own, Anison's definitely had a big past, and Butler built a big future for himself. By starring in the likes of films such as Olympus Has Fallen, Geostorm, Greenland, and we'll most likely see more films in the future starring him, I'd say both of these two, they've definitely done a really good job together as one. With all the Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler joint partnerships that have happened, you know, it's basically like what we've seen from, let's just say, Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. 
As I've said before in my episode about Silver Streak 1976, I will talk about some of the others that they both starred in together. But the thing is, sometimes actors tend to have a bit of a chemistry together, so much so that they not only just become good friends on the set and talk to each other all the time, but there's times where they collaborate on multiple projects. Besides, Adam Sandler does not only hold Jennifer Aniston as a good friend of mine, but also Kevin James. Of course, I've talked about a lot on that too. He was basically working with Kevin James in films like Chuck and Larry, Grown Ups, Pixels. And if you remember from 2021, I talked about Hubie Halloween as well. Well, not all me, but you probably get the idea. Joints with two different well-known actors. It's probably a thing that we'll probably never get to let go of at this point. Because it happens to be a thing that is not so easily taken for granted anymore. So you're probably wondering what the score is on the Bounty Hunter 2010. Well, it's time that I give it out to you. 6.7 out of 10.1. Not bad, let it move. Because we do have a lot of stuff we gotta talk about anyways. And so, this is where I sign off again, until tomorrow. But I do feel like it's about time that I start getting to talk about new films, ones that I saw in theaters. And maybe we'll do just that tomorrow. So, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side if you'd like to see more.